Hello, I'm Ali from Enemy, and I'm here with DMAs. How are you guys doing today? Good, Ali. How are you, man? Yeah, really good. Cheers. Good to see you again. Um, so last time we spoke, obviously it was kind of just before you released the Glow, um, you know, and that kind of felt like a deliberate move away from, I guess, kind of the Britpop stuff of the earlier records, more towards like a dancey, ravey kind of thing. Yeah, we'll definitely experiment. We we were kind of first leaning into, um, I guess, uh, you know, all the stuff we love about pop music and dance music, and kind of um bringing i guess uh you know i think our music will always have a, that kind of nostalgic edge to it um but it was kind of bringing it more uh being less of a throwback band and being a bit more in the in the future you know yeah did that ever feel like a risk kind of leading up to that record release i think it all like every risk i mean every album feels like a little bit of a risk i think i think you have to do that and um you know it's, it's funny because sometimes with your favorite artists, you you think you want them to make the same a 2.0 album of of your favorite album of theirs or something like that. But you kind of got to keep moving and keep testing the boundary, pushing the boundaries and 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 changing your sound up. And that's always been a really important thing to us. And yeah, we d did that on the glow. I think we started moving there, and Stuart Price kind of helped us with that on the glow. But um, on this new record um, and throughout the pandemic, you know, we spent a lot of time on on uh, working on our favorite parts of electronic and pop music and and but still um and rock and roll you know and um and i think it feels a bit more um a bit more like just quintessentially dmas in 2023 you know amazing and then big news new albums coming out in march yes yeah what can you tell us about uh, how many dreams yeah how many dreams, how many dreams? yeah um I don't know for me it's like it's uh kind of like i was saying before like we we were kind of finding our feet um with a more modern kind of sound on the glow and i think here we've kind of really nailed that down and um experimented with a lot of different sounds different genres um but yeah it's a great it's a great blend of like of the three three things we love which are like you know uh rock and roll tunes um uh more pop style sing-alongs and um and electronic music Amazing. are there any bands in particular you're kind of influenced by or inspired by for this record for me uh a big one was uh groove armada some particular albums where they um where they still had guitar stuff but but it was kind of felt you know they felt almost like rock tunes with um with the electronic undertones so um there's a bit of that going on any, any for you that particularly come to mind? Well, I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of Motown stuff, like old school stuff. So I guess like vocally, I tried to like, you know, push myself a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a, the whole thing was a really good experience. We it, there was like lots of challenges, but I think like um, we've made a record that we're all really proud of. It was the longest we've ever taken to make a record. Uh, uh, in, so a, in, in a good way. In a good way, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't plan it like that, but uh, we started off working with um, uh, Stuart Price and Rich Costi in um, in London, and um, a lot of the work we did there was um, kind of um, kind of the band in the room kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we had three weeks there, and we got most of the album down. Um, and then Omnicrom happened, and you know all that kind of stuff. So we went back home and and but when we got back to Sydney, we were kind of listening to the desk mixes and we were like, you know, I think we still have a lot, lot more work to do. Uh, but obviously we were back um, on the other side of the world. Um, and then so we got our mate um, Constantine Kirsten, who's an, a, another brilliant producer. Um, and having him come in with some fresh ears and, and we'd sat with the songs for um, for like a month or two. Um, and then it's amazing, you know, and then we came in and kind of scream it. So, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, go with, I'll go with that, <laughs> you know, and we, it was more of a band in room style. And then we kind of, you know, chopped bits up a little bit, um, you know, we'd fi find a live drum beat and then but only use eight bars of it and then put some programming in underneath it and, and add extra synths or, you know, and, and kind of have that time to be creative um, on the record, which we've never done before. And, and, and it was cool. It was really fun. Amazing. And what about lyrically? Like, did the extra time give you a chance to kind of 
re-examine those or was it a case of like once no, you've done you we know? like most of the lyrics were kind of all sorted but we definitely kind of refocused a, a couple of lyrics a couple of key choruses we kind of like reassessed some um some lyrics so yeah it was kind of one of the i feel like often when you're making a record or for us you kind of kind of got to rush through it a bit um just the way it is but this time um by the end i didn't feel rushed just felt like we had the perfect amount of time on it so, yeah yeah do you kind of feel like you said everything you kind of wanted to say with it yeah i do i think all the songs that we wanted on there are on there um all the like styles of influences that want to draw from and stuff are all there um yeah we definitely like for example there's like a song called fading like a picture on it and it's a it's kind of harks back to our kind of old dma sound right and and we do start it opens up with this um this real rocking guitar riff and for example when that we like imagine playing that live and for all the guitar heads out there they'd probably want to hear that riff twice so we do it twice you know we wouldn't just you know um cut cut a riff because we thought it needed to meet um a sort of time quote or anything like that you know yeah we kind of did what we wanted and we didn't have any boundaries really yeah and that's what i feel is exciting about it it's like kind of you can't really put it in a box i don't think yeah but it's still dmas and it's still you know going to appeal to our fans our old fans our new fans so yeah Yeah, and there's a song called um decale as well which is like a full-blown electronic song like there's very little maybe one tiny guitar and a little bit of electric bass you know yeah and we lent into that you know we weren't Going, we weren't trying to like split the difference or anything and you know and that's a five and a half minute electronic song you know with the ex- you know extending those bits and really leaning into the genre you know yeah and um which is cool and it so like you know there are surprises like that on the record um but one thing i remember Stuart price said to us was he was like even if you guys changed genres and did your thing I think even if you tried to not sound like DMAs, you couldn't. It's just always <laughs> going to sound like DMAs, and and I think that's a positive thing. Definitely. I mean, what was it like working with Stuart and Rich? Because they've obviously kind of worked with everyone. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. It's just amazing when you jump into um, a studio with um, with anyone new, whether it's a songwriter or a producer, and especially ones of that caliber who um, they've just got so many great stories, but also um, just so much knowledge. Yeah you know and um and then and same again with um with constantine you know we he's a younger guy um but he's he's made some great records as well and we've become really good friends with him um through that process as well and and um yeah all three of them nailed it so it's great would you say it's an optimistic records yeah i would it it's a bloody feel good record and um we couldn't be more proud of it amazing do you think that kind of came out of the time like it was written in you know, we're kind of COVID happening, like the uncertainty around everything. So kind of- we didn't want to release something that was gloomy after yeah. like the last whatever. You know, we're back playing gigs, playing festivals. When we play live, we don't want to be like, you know, we didn't want it to be a doom and gloom album. I mean, there's some sentiments there that are a bit doom and gloom, but like it's not, it's, it's definitely a feel good record with like, you know, positivity, nostalgia. And yeah, it's quite playful yeah. in, in, in times, you know. And I think that's come from just us growing up a bit and being a bit more confident in the studio and, and with the songs we're writing these days. Um, so you talked about the first single, um, I Don't Need to Hide. Yes. Like, what, where did that one sort of come from? What does it kind of mean to you guys? Um, well, that song was, I think the reason why we led with it is because it, it kind of blends that uh, nostalgic, anthemic um, pop thing that we do. When it breaks down, it's got the great dance vibe as well. Um, but it's also pretty rocking, so it kind of blends, you know, the, th- the three genres that we do best. Um, so I guess that was one of the reasons why it, um, we want to lead lead with it. Yeah, I, just sort of like if you could pick a song which kind of summed up the album, I think that one probably like got a bit of everything in it. So yeah. Uh, so talk to me about everyone saying Thursdays the weekends. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant title. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, it's funny actually. I um, there's a form in, in when you, when you're writing a song, sometimes you know people ask, do you have the lyrics first or do you um, write the melody first? 
And I think for most artists, there's a bit of both going on. It kind of chops and changes. Um, but that song was, I remember I was on the phone to my mate Steve and I was like, hey mate, what are you doing tonight? He goes, oh, you know, I'm just down at the pub. I was like, um, I was like, oh, what day is it? And he's like, oh, Thursday. I was like, oh yeah, it's basically the weekend. And you know, everyone has said it before, but I'd never heard it in the song. And I was like, and so I wrote it down um, in my, um, in my phone, everybody saying Thursday's the weekend, you know? And then, um, and then uh, you know, just went to the piano one day and played an E minor chord or whatever it was. And, um, you know, there's, it, I think there's truth that because I had the lyric first, that there's actually melody ingrained in the lyric, you know? And I probably wouldn't have naturally sung the melody that, that is in the song if I didn't have the lyric first. And I think that's a real interesting way of looking at songwriting and, um yeah exactly i guess kind of what you want that song to kind of mean or kind of represent to people uh that song yeah, yeah. um it's um it's funny because it's got a real playful kind of um kind of vibe um but i guess i think originally uh it was it was kind of about uh when i'd quit drinking and, and thinking of, um, you know, maybe when you've had a few too many drinks and you say something stupid or that everyone's been there, you know what I mean? Um, and just kind of a tongue in cheek kind of laughing about something like that. That was um, where it started, but we did it with a more kind of playful, um, good time vibes. And I know last time we spoke, it kind of felt like you still quite hadn't figured out what you wanted kind of DMAs to kind of mean to other people. Like you knew kind of what it meant to you guys and like you weren't yes. quite sure, I guess, you know, what people were getting from it, that sort of thing. I guess after kind of the past few years we've had, you know, people have kind of really acknowledged that like the importance of music, the importance of kind of escapism. Yes. With that in mind, you kind of, do you kind of know what you want DMAs to kind of mean to people now? Well, I think one thing that we've worked out is that if we just stay true to ourselves, I think there's a candor in that, you know, and people hear that honesty in the music. And, um, you know, we just did a signing thing just before and, and I uh, saw a photo kind of signing thing and and we did that at Leeds as well. And I think that's when you, it's pretty great to do it before the gig because you, you're seeing the people and you're seeing the faces and you, and they tell you what the songs mean to them and it really solidifies, um, you know, why you're doing it. And I don't know, I think I'd say that to any musician out there, Sp Springsteen would talk about that, you know, the best songs were ones that had a, it definitely had an element of truth to it and, and you weren't trying to convince anyone of anything. And so I think if we can just stay true to ourselves um, and keep writing these songs that are just honest, um, you know, and um, I think that's going to keep relating with people and and I think um, people are going to keep coming back and listening to the records. Yeah, because I say the shows do just keep getting bigger and bigger. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, they're getting pretty crazy these days. Yeah, Isn't I mean, I think this is our fourth reading, and um, remember the first one, it was like 200 people, and then the second, third, a little bit bigger, now we're like on main stage, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite surreal. It's um, been a bit of a landmark gig for Yeah, us. it's like a kind of come, come to a point where we can really see um, visually um, <laughs> like how, how important our music is to, to a, lot of, a lot of people, so it's really nice. Do you still kind of you still feel comfortable on those big stages? Or are you still like, how, how have we got here? Like, yeah, no. Sometimes got... the, the really small ones are uh, in a way harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Festivals are good. It's funny yeah. though, actually. A lot of the songs on this new album, um, uh, I had, I kind of had in mind for you know, um, th we thinking about the live show yeah. a lot more and going oh yeah this vibe would go down well at a live gig which i'd kind of never written like that before yeah. but it's definitely um been in the back of my mind with um writing particular songs and you know we played i don't need to hide the uh, the other day and it, and for such a new song it went down really well and and um you know and i think this is going to be more and more of that in the set and that as well with the glow is like incorporating some of the more pop and electronic elements um it makes if it makes it, it makes me feel like we can hold our own on those big stages and it also makes me feel like when we play bigger shows like Ali Pally um, there's a real dynamic to the set now and it, there's a story and it flows and um, that's something I'm really proud of as well. well I'll let you guys get on but thank you so much for taking thanks the time. Thanks for your time yeah, man. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.